Hello everybody, welcome to the second episode of Swords of Reviewing Lights. I am Logan, and I'm joined once again by... Austin, still here. Yes. I have so, not in fact been murdered by piles of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Uh, one day that might happen, but not today. Yes. So, let's see. Today we watched the second episode of Yu-Gi-Oh!, because, well, it was only one duel, so... Or technically two. Technically three. Or, <laughs> or three, if you want to go that way. All the gauntlet is thrown. This was an interesting episode, and let's jump right into it. Episode starts once again, two episodes in a row, by a duel involving Joey. So this time he's facing Taya. He summons uh, what he assumes to be a strong monster, and... He's it's obviously stronger than the monster Taya summons, but it also has a magic card, and she destroys Joey's monster, and she wins the duel. We're not exactly sure how she wins the duel, but you see, you actually see that multiple times in this episode, where it's like, they're like, and this person's won, and, and you kind of just have to go, but wait, did they ever actually, like, attack? No? Oh, okay, whatever. I guess they won. I mean, technically, the next duel does end in a, an attack. True. But also, it was presented as though that was turn one, and I don't think that would have been enough damage. <laughs> oh, we'll talk about that part when we get yeah. to it. But, um, uh, well, Yugi and Joey talk afterwards outside school, and Joey is wondering why he isn't doing that well. He keeps losing. So Yugi takes a look at Joey's deck, and it's completely full of monsters. Not one single spell, magic, or trap card. He apparently just filled it up with all the monsters he could find and said, that's good. Yeah, that's... I mean, the only thing more realistic about that from a, like, a new player building a deck perspective is if y Yugi would have tried to grab the deck but couldn't because it was 120 cards thick, that would be really realistic. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, if you remember, in the, in the very beginning, there technically was no limit. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, a little side tangent here. The first ever tournament I went to, I had this, like, 80-card warrior spellcaster deck. It was so inconsistent, and I had no idea what I was doing deck-building-wise, but hey. Well, if I'm correct, uh, yeah, if I'm correct, uh, they did have, they did eventually make a limit of 80 cards, and then they lowered it to 60. Yeah. I believe they always had a minimum of 40. Yes, 40 was always the minimum, so you couldn't just make a deck of the five pieces of Exodia and win. <laughs> yeah, that would be, uh, it's, I'm, I bet that there was at least someone who tried that. <laughs> I built my deck. Why is it only five cards? Oh, let's just start. You're going deck out so fast. Oh, hey, look, I win. It's five pieces of exodia. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, Yugi talks about his grandpa and how he's an amazing duelist, despite the fact that Yugi won the previous duel that his grandfather lost, so... Who's really the better duelist there? Amazing duelist. Could never draw five cards. Mm. Yeah, so after that, uh, Yugi takes Joey to his home and basically asks his grandfather to teach Joey how to be a duelist. And after a bit of convincing and showing a foreshadowing poster, we... Well, we cut to apparently several weeks later. Yeah, I made a note of that too when, when Taya just makes a little comment of like, it's been, you've been training for weeks, and it's like, it's been weeks? It's, that's a random time skip, but okay, it's been weeks. At the time, it does kind of make sense with what happens a little later in the episode. Yeah. Since a lot, since, like, when you, since the beginning of the episode could have been like, maybe a day or two after, uh, uh, have his defeat. So, a couple weeks pass makes sense for everything else that goes on. And, well, ap well, uh, they're, the guys are watching the uh, finals of the current tournament, 
And they even uh, make mention to the fact that, well, they introduced the two new characters, Rex Ractor and Weevil Underwood, who are the current finalists. And, as and they start, and yeah. well, they start off their duel, and we continue, and we continue in the background of the main characters, in which Yugi gets a package from Industrial Illusions, which is the company that makes the card game. I was going to mention as we as we learn uh, in the future, you can't spell evil without evil. <laughs> yes, and Yugi mentions that even though uh, Kaiba that he's that he must have gotten the package from Industrial Illusions because of his defeat over Kaiba, and even though it wasn't technically an official pool which Kaiba still technically has his world championship title, uh, Yugi, Yugi still beat him, and Kaiba dropped out of the current tournament that they're watching on television. So they get to continuing watching the duel in which, well, they're nearing the end of the duel. And... Rex brings out his most powerful monster, which, no, it's not. It's the well, two-headed no, king no. Rex. Technically, this was his most powerful monster, because if you remember, and then we'll get into this once we get to the episode, his most powerful monster was his was his prize for getting to this part of the tournament, right? It like, wasn't I mean, that a thing? Or am I just remembering wrong? I don't exactly remember that, though... There is at least a couple other cards that he has that are technically stronger, like the uh, spike-tailed dra- dinosaur monster. <laughs> yes, because that has 1800 attack, and there's no distributing in this season. Wee. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, well, Evil summons out his basic insect, and, well, a 1600 attack point monster versus a 500... You can do the math, but oh, Rex activates Weevil's trap, which is not what it actually is. It's, it's a magic card. A, no, it's, a tra- it's a trap card, which in the show is just right. a vortex card, which is not anything, but in reality, it's actually infinite dismissal, I believe. Uh, yeah, infinite dismissal, but the card only affects... Uh, three star or lower monsters, and it they use it very wrong in the pool. <laughs> Look, that's just that's just season one. Every time yeah. we see a card, there was going to be at least one moment every duel where you go, "Wait a second, that's not how that works." <laughs> oh, Weevil does equip his uh, laser armor cannon or armor laser cannon or whatever. To his basic insect, he attacks and wins the duel. And at the ver- and after the duel, he's presented the the cup of winning by the, the one and only creator of duel monsters, Maximilian Pegasus. And Pegasus also takes the time to completely uh, disregard this entire tournament and announces his own tournament. Yeah, I just want to point out two things from this scene. Uh, The first one being uh, that we get our first example of Pegasus having to be as dramatic as possible. The dude literally rises up from the ground. He could have walked, but no, no. They they built a trap door into the hologram arena (laughs) just so that he could be raised up and approach uh, Weevil. And also, Weevil himself, it seemed like, really, like, I, I, I don't understand, if you look at his face, it almost looks like what they normally do for anime characters when they're, like, drunk. He was, like, super blush. Like, he was so enamored by Maximilian Pegasus. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he's meeting the, uh, the maker of the game that he just won a tournament of. Oh, of course, he's he's meeting, he is meeting a celebrity to him. He is meeting the creator 
of dual monsters. And yeah, I can understand him being a little starstruck. Yeah, so Pegasus announces uh, the, his new tournament of Duel's Kingdom, which he is holding on his own private island, which and he owns... He, he made the card game, which is broadcast over live television all over the world. I, yeah, I think he can own a private island. Yeah, he, he, he can probably afford a private island, at least. And, uh, well, we go from there to Pegasus's private limo, and they mention that, well, Pegasus apparently himself wanted Yugi to get that package he got in the mail, and that he's apparently looking for the Millennium items. And we go back to Yugi, and they have just finished watching the duel, and... Well, they're excited for more dueling stuff. But Grandpa reminds Yugi that, oh, yeah, he has a package, and he opens it up. Inside is a VHS tape for a, a strange-looking glove and two stars. Another, n another uh, sign of when this show came out in the fact that it's a VHS tape. <laughs> so it's, so it's kind of funny when you're watching... Uh, older anime or, or TV and they was like, and let me use my VHS tape or let me let me put even even let me put my DVD in like th these are things that you just don't Technology has just changed so much <laughs> Like using a floppy disk and stuff like Ex that exactly and it's even if I just look in within the series You know the very first series we have a VHS tape and now in the most modern series it's all takes place in virtual reality, and it's not even like that much of a too far distant idea. Like that could just legit be a thing. That is true. And so Yugi and the others thinking that the table most likely provides some answers. He puts in he puts the tape in to his VHS player, and Pegasus is there. Pegasus. Uh, congratulates Yugi for his defeat of Kaiba and challenges him to a duel which how is Yugi supposed to duel a tape a pre-recorded tape is oh, beyond anyone it's it's a very simple answer as is shown in the show and literally yelled out by Pegasus magic it's magic <laughs> Yes, so in order to duel them, and Pegasus sets a 15-minute time limit on the duel, and, he's, and he brings Yugi and himself to the Shadow Realm. Uh, the first mention of the Shadow Realm. Ugh, but, the Shadow Realm. <laughs> but this seems to be a one and only thing in which, uh, apparently time has frozen in real time, in real life. Yeah, it's a weird uh, um, version of the Shadow Realm, though, of course, the Shadow Realm kind of became the dub's answer to anything. Well, this could be like them, well, this could be Pegasus bringing them, like, directly into the Shadow Realm and not just, like, bringing the Shadow Realm to the real world. Either way, we get ourselves the first duel between Yugi and Pegasus. Pegasus starts and just plays the card face down. That's pretty much it. And you and it becomes Yugi's turn, and he's about to make his move when Pegasus halts him and calls out that Yugi's about to summon a dragon. And in Yugi's hand, the monster he's about to summon is in fact a dragon. So he activates his dragon capture jar, which once again doesn't. They don't use its effect because it <laughs> takes Yugi's card from his hand and traps in the jar. This is at least a little bit better, right? This is at least a little bit more close to what he actually does. It just changed it from on field to in hand. <laughs> yes, and well, he. Pegasus summons his Dragon Piper, 
and summons the Komori Dragon card that he took from Yugi out onto the side of the field. And Yugi decides to attack the Dragon Piper with his Silver Fang, a monster with only 1,200 attack. But Pegasus used counters with the Komori Dragon and destroys Yugi's monster. Now, this is an interesting thing to point out, that, that weirdly enough, in this stage of the anime, and I don't think this sticks around for very long, it's almost mostly in this duel specifically, there's almost an element of, like, Magic the Gathering style blocking, <laughs> where, like, the the defending player decided, nah, that attack is going to this monster instead. It's kind of weird. You see this at least one more time way. throughout this duel, too. I believe they do that once in a while, though it's usually during a tag duel. Yeah, and I think they... There's at least, like, some idea in, like, a tag duel that that might just be a rule of tag dueling, but this is just, like, a thing. It's weird. Yeah. And continuing on from it, well, Pegasus... Well, Yugi, uh, decides if Pegasus can somehow read his mind, he will just, um... Play a card without looking at it, which I'm pretty sure would be illegal under any type of thing, considering he had it from the deck and played it face down on the field in attack position, which... Hey, what? Taya did that earlier, too, if you recall. Her, um... They, they, it was a weird... I wanted to mention this earlier, but I kind of just glossed over it. There's a weird visual cha- issue with uh, Taya's, I think it was just Spirit of Friendship or something like that, the monster that she has, when you first see it, it's actually face down in attack position, and then when you go back, it's now face down in defense position. It's just a weird little, um, a real little animation error that I noticed. Yeah, but this was actually deliberate. Yes, this was actually, uh, this is him just going, well, I guess I'm going to play this card, whatever it is. (laughs) And... It's actually kind of weird, because Pegasus apparently assumes that what Yugi's doing, even though he can read his mind, apparently, and he... and apparently he has a weird eye that apparently seems to be what he's able to read Yugi's mind with. But at the same time, he doesn't read Yugi's mind about what he's currently doing. Well, there was a moment of this uh, that I also made a little note of uh, that I simply wrote flashback five seconds, uh, cause there's a point where Pegasus uses the eye, you see a little image of, of the skeleton warrior, or the zombie warrior, whatever it's called, um, I, I should be better at names if you view cards, I really should, but, uh, he, he sees a little image of that, and then it's like, hi, you wanna play that zombie card, aren't you? Um, and he's like, what's going on? And then there's just randomly, like, a flashback to five seconds earlier when we just see that scene again. And I think to your point, there might be... It, it may, I can't remember if this is... I, I think they changed it later, but I think in this version, at least at this time, Pegasus had to activate the effect of his eye. Like, it wasn't just, like, a passive thing that just always was going. He had to specifically go, let me see what you're about to do. And he just didn't think it was necessary for him to look again. Though at the same time, we can partially assume that what he's doing, he's able to see Yugi's side of the field, unless he's only, unless he's only doing, unless he's only just reading his mind and making counters to it. So that's part of the thing that we know know about. Mm-hmm. It's but weird. You, you I think we can just card- establish it's weird. <laughs> It's, you're right, there is some part of this that just doesn't quite make sense. Like, he should very distinctly be able to see with his good eye that, oh, he just placed a monster card. Why did you place a face-down monster card in attack position? Even doing? after Yugi does that, he can, Pexus once again, mentions that he's going to s- summon the uh, zombie warrior. This is one of those times where I'd almost, I, I'd almost want to go to uh, look at the, 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 the original, the Japanese version, and just see if this is one of those random cases where the dub's like, let's have him say this thing, and it just doesn't make sense. Right. 
Atyugi flips over his card, and, well, it turns out to be a... Well, it turns out to be the Dark Magician. Which, once again, despite going on to be his ace card, gets the short end of the stick. <laughs> and Yugi destroys the Komori Dragon, apparently Dragon Piper 2, somehow. And... And takes us down a bit. I even noticed that was a thing that happened. <laughs> Well, you never see the card again, so... Yeah, you never see the card again. It totally was destroyed when... I mean, I think... I'd have to quickly look it up. Um, Dragon Piper. You're going to hear my keyboard, because I'm actually looking something up, right? Um, God, yeah, D Dragon Piper in, in real life actually does nothing similar to what it does. In the in the anime, because in the anime it just changes their battle position, <laughs> doesn't take yeah, control. But in the it's anime, very different. Yeah, yeah. In the anime, it doesn't even sacrifice itself. So yeah, who knows where it went? It just went somewhere. It disappeared. <laughs> it seems like a uh, dragon paper is more. Be more a card that your opponent would use on you if you were using Dragon Capture Jar. Yeah, yeah, it was meant to be a counter to Dragon Capture Jar because you you had some of that back in the day. You have cards like uh, what was it like, Anti Regeki, <laughs> which yeah. which only had the purpose of turning Regeki into a your opponent Regeki's his field instead. <laughs> like <laughs> they made some weird cards back in the day. Yes, and. Well, Pegasus, not really caring too much, even though he's currently lower. Currently, he has lower life points than Yugi, and there are only five minutes left. Well, Pegasus just summons the Illusionist Faceless Mage, which is a card that Yugi has never seen before, and he equips it with a card that, to this day, has never existed outside mm -hmm. the show: the Eye of Illusion. But Yugi not really caring about that. He attacks the Faceless Mage. But for some reason, it doesn't get destroyed. Nothing happens. <laughs> and unlike in modern... Unlike in some of the more modern animes, uh, Pegasus did not still take the damage. <laughs> yep. But Yugi then summons out his Celtic Guardian and attacks the mage. But Pegasus somehow uses the dark magic attack and it apparently took apparently the faceless mage took control of Yugi's monster and had it destroy the Celtic Guardian, bringing Yugi down to four hundred life points. I thought this was actually kind of, especially when you look back having watched the series, because we have, we aren't acting like we haven't. Um, that card, the Equip spell, basically turned in, turned his uh, Illusionist Mage, which I think was called Faceless Mage in the anime for some reason. Um, turned, it's called the Illusionist Faceless Mage. Yeah, they just kind of cut out some of the words. <laughs> uh, it turned it into a, a Relinquish. Because you can just, because from the looks of it, that's what the effect kind of became. Take control of an opponent's monster, and you gain the stats of that monster. And in the anime, you even see this later on when Relinquish shows up, that means it can use the attack of the monster it's stolen. Well, actually, I checked uh, I checked the uh, wiki earlier because I'm, I was sure that it wasn't a real card. Yeah. And it stated that the mage just takes control of the monster for one turn. I mean, granted, though, was that ever clarified that it had to be one turn? Because we only see one more turn after that, so... Mm -hmm. Eh, we have no idea. That's probably what they're going off of. All but, right. essentially after that, the, uh... Well, we don't see the Dark Magician after that, so it, it possibly could have been destroyed. True. But... 
Pegasus is pretty much assuming that he's won because there are only 10 seconds left. But Yugi's like, Pegasus, you have no mo- you you only have your one monster and there's still a little bit of time left. So Yugi summons another pretty signature monster of his that you'll see a lot. The Summon Skull. He uh, yeah. attacks in which it attacks in a way that we never see again. He basically directly attacks the monster physically when later on we only ever see it use electric attacks. Even in the intro we see it using an electric attack. <laughs> Here it just decided to straight up maul this thing. <laughs> yeah. But it ends about a second before someone's goal could attack. And... Oh. So well, sorry. You be lost. And with the loss, Lugi doesn't. Lugi, what? <laughs> Yugi doesn't just lose the duel. He loses someone very close to him as Pegasus steals the soul of Grandpa. And that is more or less where this episode ends. Yeah, Pegasus ends it off saying that. He will keep his grandfather's soul until their next duel, basically using it as collateral. Mm -hmm. So, that was episode two. And there's a few things I mentioned, I, I wrote down as notes. I didn't really have time to mention while we were going over the episode, but I kind of want to bring them up. Um, the big one being Pegasus is, a, is my favorite villain. I've mentioned this last episode. And this is one of the reasons he's the only villain I've ever known to monologue for victory. <laughs> like, almost always when a villain starts monologuing, it's just like the idea of, uh, oh, he's about to, he's, he's just monologuing now, and this is just going to buy the time the hero needs to get out of this situation or whatever. But no, this is actually the one time where... <laughs> He monologues and tells this whole, like, history of the Shadow Games and things like that. And that time that was wasted because of that is what makes the difference and is why Yugi loses. Which I just think is actually kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's also a moment uh, when he's doing that monologue and he's talking about the, the old Shadow Games and stuff. You actually get a sneak peek of the of the big duel between Pegasus and, and, and Yugi. More foreshadowing. Yeah, because it's there's a there's an animation of Dark Magician of Chaos defeating Thousand Eyes Restrict. Magician of Black Chaos. Right, right. Magician of Black I always confuse the ritual and the actual monster version. <laughs> Which when you think about it, it's actually kinda of funny considering uh well during this episode we see Two foreshadowings of the two uh, ritual monsters yeah. in Yugi's deck. Uh, so yeah, those are some. Of, oh yeah, there's also a uh, uh, when when he summons the Dark Magician, and and Pegasus doesn't seem flustered. Yugi says, "My Dark Magician is one of the strongest magic cards in the game." You okay there, Yugi? <laughs> I think you're seeing colors. It's not a green card. <laughs> I don't know why he calls Dark Magician a magic card. It is very clearly not a magic card. In fact, that was one of the thematics of this of this episode. If you notice going through the episode, there's multiple cases of them going, hey, it's not just about the monsters, it's about using magic cards and trap cards to supplement them. And, you know, you see that in the very first duel between Jari and Taya. You see that in the Rex and Weevil duel. And then... <laughs> and then Yugi just calls Dark Magician a magic card. Why? So, if, so when you do, so you do realize that Yugi didn't act... Yugi only summoned three monsters in this entire duel. Or No, he summoned... Yes, yeah, he four summoned, monsters. He, uh, four no, monsters four during monsters. the entire duel. That's Wolf. Yeah, he summoned four monsters during the entire duel and did not use any spell or trap cards. And that's why he lost. <laughs> yep. It, 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 we see the next time they face, you know what Yugi has? Spell cards. Ritual spells, to be specific. 
a lot of them. Yeah. Cards that seemingly come out of nowhere, I'm considering good. we've never seen them beforehand and we never see them again. I will say, though, once we get to that episode, uh, if I'm remembering correctly, it's not as an out of nowhere as you might be remembering. They do show a scene of Yugi going through his deck and editing it before the his, his game, his match with uh, Pegasus. You have to wonder, where did he get these cards anyway, considering, well, later they mentioned that Yugi's not going to edit his grandfather's deck. Because he... he... While that's true, he does. He does edit his grandfather's deck. And where um, did he even get the cards anyway? I mean, as we see in the next episode, he had to edit his deck because suddenly five cards are missing. <laughs> so That he, is pretty true. He has to fill five spaces. And so he does have to edit his deck. And I think these cards are shown to be other cards he could have put in the deck but he didn't at the time. And now he's like, you know what, I need these guys. Um, it does, of course, look, it's still, once we get there, I think we'll have more of a discussion about this, but this is definitely an issue with most of, of most of Yu-Gi-Oh! anime, where the protagonist suddenly has cards that they didn't, and you're like, when did you get those? And there was no good answer. It's just, he's always had them, maybe, I guess. You just never yeah, I think it's them. only... I think it's only GX in which random cards appear out of nowhere, and you actually get an explanation for how they appear out of nowhere. Uh, and to an extent, I will say Vrains also, uh, they because it's actually the like the mechanic of the the speed duels that he can literally pull a card out of nowhere because of his unique ability. So they at least actually techni- no reason. technically the first episode of uh, Arc Five as well. Yes, yes, I will, and and. Uh, don't get me started about Zexel, where it's literally just... <laughs> it's it's almost worse than Zexel, because he's literally shown at one point to turn a card into a different card. <laughs> it's like, what? No, you... That's cheating. <laughs> uh, but you get yeah, protagonist is... superpowers. That's a, that's a discussion for another day. <laughs> yeah, we will get to those in probably a couple of years' time. <laughs> well, in due time, we will... We'll discuss that madness. Yeah, who knows if we'll ever even finish this podcast. <laughs> who knows if we'll finish this episode. Dun, dun, dun. So, <laughs> what did you think about this episode, looking back at it? I thought it was uh, very nice. It was it was, a, it was a lot of fun and gave us some good explanation to stuff that, well, we'll need explanation eventually and uh, best get it out of the way early on. Yeah, this and was, a good and a good way of filling up time. <laughs> this was the hook episode, right? This is the episode where they had to go. Okay, what is going to be the actual plot? Because we had the first episode that introduced the basic concepts and and showed Yugi's heart of the cards and power of friendship. You know, it literally introduced all the basic concepts. Now, what's the plot going to be like? And this had to be the episode that gave you the hook. And so you see Pegasus talking about his Duelist Kingdom tournament. He meant he's talking about the Millennium items that we've heard in the intro, but haven't seen anything other than Yugi's. And you start to get a, a feel. It becomes very clear that here is your protagonist, here is your antagonist, and here we go. Here is the story that's going to be told. Um, and so I think this episode definitely does that well. I think there's definitely... This episode probably, I mean, I'll probably, I'll, I'm going to say, I'll say this now, and then we'll get to another episode, and I'll say it again. This episode, I think, is the one that most bends the rules, but I'm, there's probably another episode that's going to make me change my mind on that, but they definitely take a lot of liberties with what the cards do in this episode, a lot more than we tend to see, um... And future episodes. I mean, you do still have the occasional shoot the castle or call of the haunted giving percent attack points. But and card that doesn't <laughs> exist. And cards that don't exist, like, I'm okay with because it's not like. They're not breaking a rule that exists because they just made a new one. <laughs> 
but yeah, uh, this 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 duel definitely ha- these duels definitely had a lot of. Uh, it happened. It, it, there was there was a lot of like okay I guess that's how this works I don't know. Um, I was just disappointed that th- that that uh, there was. Um, you know, strike that. I'm not disappointed. I got to see Pegasus. He's my favorite villain. Best episode. 10 out of 10. <laughs> uh, it, is, it is, I think, an interesting note that he doesn't use any of his actual cards, so to speak. Like, he just... He he hides his two monsters until uh, the end of, of the arc, which is very smart of him. Keep, keep as much deck knowledge out of the hands of Yugi. <laughs> Since your power yes. is having deck knowledge. <laughs> and I guess that'll be the end of this episode of the Swords Are Reviewing Lights. Yes. Uh, we will be back next time covering episode three. Whatever the title of that episode is. I don't have Netflix opened right now. I probably should, but I don't. Do you have the episode title? <laughs> I will in probably just a second. I will stall for more time. Journey to the... Episode 3, Journey to the Duelist Kingdom. Journey to the Duelist Kingdom. Ah. Oh boy, that that episode. <laughs> Looking forward to our next recording, I'll say that much. <laughs> it should be a fun one, considering right. this will be one of the few, very few episodes without a single duel in it. Yeah, it's an episode with no duel and some wonderful dialogue. <laughs> so, until next time, guys, I'm Austin. I am Logan. And... Ta-ta! Bye. I don't know. I still haven't figured out what I want to say at the end of these things. Goodbye! And if you want to send us an email, you can send one to us at reviewinglight at gmail.com. Thank you, guys, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye! Bye.